Okay, we're going to probably ruffle some feathers here with with this quote-unquote opinion, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, the, the Ubuntu 22, 2404, there's been a lot of hate thrown at it long before it even came out. Um, it's even not out yet. Just the beta's out. Um, so I downloaded it and tried it because I want to see if these are true. Um, there's There were rumors that, uh, some pretty nasty rumors. And so far they're turning out not to be true, at least with the beta. I can ver I've verified that this is not happening on the beta. But, so here we go. This is, uh, what am I calling this? Distinguishing the hate hype from the truth <laughs> about Ubuntu 2404. So let's, let's get into this. This, you know, this is start off. This is all from my personal point of view, um, of the, of the beta. I've been using the beta for nearly two weeks now. Well, a week and a half. Um, I've used, I used it every day for the day job and work you know day job work and everything i've done for play has been on ubuntu 2404 it's been my only operating system for the last week and a half overall in a nutshell there is nothing wrong with it it works it's functions the best ubuntu that's ever been at least the experience i've had um the big the big issue with it is the snaps everybody's having a cow about snap packages for some reason here lately at least the last year or so it's like the world's most evil package management system um First, let me go over how I'm approaching it, because this is probably the approach that a normal user is going to use this. I'm not talking about, hey, I'm not talking a normal user. I'm not talking these YouTube sensational headline people and Linux news journalists that are looking for clickbait titles. I'm talking normal, everyday users that just use the damn computer to do work and to surf Facebook, TikTok, or whatever. It's totally fine. It's going to work just great. Um, to be a smart user for an operating system is a completely different thing than a die-hard Linux Luddite. Um, typically, okay, let's go over real quick. For those who don't know, there's like three or four main packaging systems on the Debian slash Ubuntu side. There's the regular old Debian packages and apt repositories. There's also stat packages, flat packs, and app images. Snap packages are basically Ubuntu's thing. They came up with the with the snap packages because they wanted a something to differentiate them from the rest of the crowd out in the Linux community. And they also wanted to allow developers to make their own packages that would just work all across, kind of like flat packs. If I remember right, snap packages were before flat packs. Flat packs are now huge because they're completely 100% open source and everybody jumped on board with it. And Ubuntu's back end, their store, is closed source so that's where a lot of the 
breakdown happens, people on Hayden, on Ubuntu, is the Snap Store being proprietary. But we're going get, to get to all that soon. So this is how I'm approaching it and how I believe most users, average users, not the power users, not the developers themselves, but actual real day-to-day -day users that just use the computer and get off the computer is going to handle it. They're going to install whatever the package manager has. Number one. Number two, if they're smart and they put thought into it, they're going to go look for these apps and install whatever package the app developer suggests, whether it's a flat pack, whether it's a snap, or whether it's just a regular old Debian image, or even an app image. That's what they're going to do. Chances are, though... <laughs> You're going to get some idiot that will just, you know, start clicking on everything. But this is the way I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I will first go to the to the app, to the software store in Ubuntu, which, by the way, we'll cover later, is actually the best store that Ubuntu's ever had. And then I'll, you know, I'll look on there. And if it's a, you know, like a verified type deal or if it's a something questionable, I will go to that app's website and see what they recommend to install. If they say they officially support the Snap, I'm going to officially install the Snap. If they say they officially install the Flatpak, I'm going to install the Flatpak. Now, before we get in, we, we got some stuff we're going to dispel here about the App Center. Um, so, just, just to put it, this into perspective here, in the last three to four years, I ran Pop! OS for two years straight on this machine right here with a terabyte storage, or yeah, two terabyte storage, and a two internal SSDs at 500 gigs each. So that's a total of three terabytes. The external storage drive is now up to a, a terabyte, so it's half full. And the two internal terabytes are down to, what is it? One, when I got out of the the Pop! OS and went into Zorn, it was up to like 40%. Now, at that time, I was installing everything in this, under the sun as a flat pack. Flat packs are freaking huge. I don't care what anybody says. Oh, storage isn't the problem. Storage isn't a problem with flat packs. Yes, they are. When you install, I think I had a hundred and 20, 130 flat packs installed at once. And for each, you got to remember, a flat pack app or snap is the entire, is, is basically is bundled with basically everything that app needs to run. Kind of like a pseudo operating system built into the app. So, that's what makes these things huge. And they've been so hot and heavy on updates. I mean, dude, just... I, I had 120, 130 apps in there. That was like 25% of a 500 gigabyte hard drive. It's like 100 gigs just in apps. <laughs> that Not including the software center or the software the root file system or not including the 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 data damn near half of it of a 500 dude that was 250 gigabytes for the freaking apps <laughs> that's not right so anyways i went from pop os to zorn 
I'm going to pause this because Marge is driving me nuts here. Open the door to let the cat out. And she just stands there and stares at outside the door like, <gasps> I can't believe he opened it. Anyways, I digress. Okay, so 250 gigabytes just in apps. You know, damn near half the half the drive of root is apps from flatbacks. So I moved over to Zorin OS and Pop OS at the same time. And they were they were good. You know, I'm peachy green, all happy. Then I have switched to Debian Bookworm, took over the whole drive. Um and everything was Debs. Down to I think it was less than 20%, including, you know, apps and data. Or not apps and data, but apps and root. And then I went to MX Linux. Not on purpose. Did that on accident. I was a bonehead. And then they posted the beta for 2404. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to check this out. See if this is any true. So this is what I've been using for a week and a half now. Is Ubuntu 22, 2404. And it's not bad at all. It's actually pretty good. Um, I'm using mostly snaps and dibs. Uh, not using very many flat packs at all. In fact, I will pull this up here for you. Let's make this big. Let's do a snap list. When I installed it, there was only nine snaps. Two were actual apps, Firefox and Thunderbird. Um, the they were and the rest were the other seven snaps were runtimes, and has the Snap Store and Snap D and the Snap Desktop integration. Not bad at all. So this is what I have installed now. Um, so I don't use app images. I hate app images. I think they're dumb. A lot of people like them. I think they have their place. Their place is not for me. Um, <laughs> it's just, I don't see the, the use of an app image. Not for my case. Not for my use case. Um, flat packs. I love the idea of flat packs. And yeah, they're great. They're totally 100% open source. And yeah, anybody can have their own their own flat, flat pack store and, and flat repo, flat pack repo and blah, 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 blah. That's all fine and dandy, but everybody just uses flat up. Yeah, the Fedora's got their flat pack repo i think elementary and pop also have their own flat packs repos but uh yeah that's everybody gets their shit from from flat hub so it's just as centralized as everything else out there so don't give me come don't come at me bro because <laughs> i will fight you tooth, tooth and nail on it my all-time favorite and pre preferred is an apt package, a Debian package. That's what I want. That's what I want to use. I understand why Ubuntu did the snaps in the snap store, and they. I understand why they made it proprietary because they want to limit what is where where you know the amount of snap stores, so then. Not every Tom, Dick, and Harry can go out there and make their own Snap Store and just start installing, you know, start having you to install bullshit all the time, which is a good thing because you remember the PPA issues and the issues with the personal package PPAs, you know, where, you know, you could just install any PPA, I mean, you still can, and... Who knows what you can find in a PPA? And <laughs> it's just 
that's just what I mean. Is it's they do one thing to try to make things right and work well and be secure, and people hate on them. I look. We get that they're it's canonical. We get that they are a company, and their job is to make money as a company, just as System Seventy Six as a job to make money as a company. They make Pop OS. They had a problem with GNOME. And they went and made their own desktop environment. And everybody fawns all over that. That's the greatest thing since, you know, sliced bread. But Canonical created snaps and everybody thinks they're the, the, the evil. And your your hate and your your discontent is only aimed at them because they are a, co a company. If, uh, if, you know, Debian had created Snaps, it would have a whole different meaning. If, if Gentoo had created Snaps, it would have a whole different meaning. If Arch had created Snaps, it would have a whole different meaning and reaction. But because it was canonical and their past with trying to make money, be it the Amazon fiasco or or what have you, it was, you know, yeah, they didn't make, so I admit, they did not make very smart decisions back in the day. But you got to remember, their company and they have to make money, and they're giving away Ubuntu desktop for free. <laughs> yes, they have Ubuntu Pro. It's aimed at people, but Ubuntu Pro for regular users for personal use is free. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Oh, oh, yeah, I forgot to run the flat pack command. Here's my flat packs that I got listed. So, there you go. So, that was my uh, package management, what I'm doing. I'm using snaps first and foremost. Then I'll move on to Debs, and then I'll move on to the, um, whatchamacallit, flatbacks. And I will not touch app images. I haven't ran across any app out there that I want to use or need to use that has an app image only version of it or an officially supported app image. There's, they just don't exist and I don't need them. Um, Here's here's some of the haters points. It'll substitute snaps for Debs. Bullshit. It does not. And I can prove it. Here we go. Let's pick do I have transmission installed? No, I do not have transmission installed. Okay, so look. Let's install transmission. You know, NER. Oops. Too many. Installing. Boom. So let's see what did that what did that install there? Transmission. Okay, it installed this the snap. Okay, so let's let's try this. I'm gonna put this over here. Oops. Get it on the right monitor here. Well uninstall this one. Do 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 do
when you're looking on the Explore featured productivity or development or games, those are going to show nothing but snaps. Why? Because this is the snap store. But if you search for, see if it turns up if I look for transmission. Oh, if I could spell it right. There. Now I can spell it right. See, it shows up like that. But during the search, look at this filter by Snap or Debian packages. Put the right spelling on there. Hey, look at that. I bet if we install that. Oh, wow, that was pretty quick. Now, if we go over here and we do this again, snap list. See, look, there's no transmission there. But look, hey, look, there's transmission right there. So, it does not install, uh, substitute snaps for, de for devs. It gives snaps priority in the software center, but you can still look for and install Debian packages. Now, I did uninstall Thunderbird and Firefox both and it reinstalled them through the Snap Store. And it reinstalled the Snaps. Even though I told it to install the Debian. So. It's, it seems to be picking and choosing which ones. If, if it's a random app that you install is not going to install the Snap package. It will if you're not looking at what you're installing. Okay. Uh, the other thing is everything is a snap. That's a bullshit argument too. I already said, you know, went over that nine, there's nine snap packages installed by default and they're mostly run times. Um, snaps are evil and run like shit. No, they are not evil. They do not run like shit. I will show you this here, this is, let me find a, which one of these is a snap? Oh, the snap store is a, that's a snap. Look how fast that opens up. Um, find something else that's, ah, oh, Tor was a snap. I installed Tor, it was a snap. There's Tor. This one's Firefox. And this one is... Brave, I believe. Yeah, Brave. So, yeah. They seem to be working just fine and dandy and fast. Um, and you can install Debian packages. Um, you can't install flat packs. It won't let you install flat packs. Yes, it does. All you have to do is go to FlatHub and, or you can, you can pull up the app center and search for flat pack. This is going to look for snap packages, but you look for Debian packages. There it is right there. Flat pack support. This is the one for your, for your, uh, gnome software center, which you can install right from this. No software. Right there, look, there's no tweaks. These are Debian packages. You just got to filter. There's your, the old GNOME package updater. Yeah, this, this, but anyways, I, I yeah, I, I don't remember if I did the, don't remember if I put the flat packs in here or not. Uh, so you're installed. Yes, I did. Amber all. Oh, that's a snap. Uh, la, 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 la. Find a flat pack that I know is a flat pack.
That wasn't a flat pack. What did I install as a flat pack? It doesn't tell me the flat. I may not have installed the flat pack, or I didn't reboot one of the two. I don't remember. Hmm. I know how to find out what I installed as a flat pack. Uh, shield chat. Find shieldy chat. There it is. And fly it up. Look at that. Ah, huh. imagine that. Can't install flat packs on Ubuntu 2404 from a software center. You have to use the command line. No, you don't. You just have to use your brain. Um, the new software app won't install. Oh, yeah, I just did that. Uh, Canonical is an evil corporation. No, it's not an evil corporation. It's a company that's trying to make money. It's not that hard. Um... Yeah, you know, these same people that gripe and complain about uh, canonical is evil, you know, blah, blah, blah. They're also the same people that really love Red Hat for some reason. I don't think that Red Hat is, is, is the people at, at Red Hat themselves are in, in, you know, necess necessarily inherently evil, but the people that they work for are they they you know microsoft owns them so they're innovating how they're trying to walk the fence on both sides and they don't care which side the foot comes down on at least companies like system 76 and canonical care about what side their foot comes down on. So, let's get into what is new in Ubuntu 2404. This this right here is the what you call it, the good old 2204. I think if you want to get to it, you go to uh was it Shit, I can't remember the repository, no. No. Anyways, I'll put a link to it in the in the description. But the <laughs> when you get to Ah, oh, the hate bro on to cracks me up. I think I've got boxes installed on boxes. Did I install one on boxes? Don't want to show this. Yep, there it is. Hey, yada, 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 yada. Okay. There it is. Shut that off. Get bigger. Let's go over here. We'll install from a file I've got it downloaded somewhere here 2404 beta desktop Oop. oh no KVM what did I do try this okay while that's downloading probably should Oh, it's a file not found. What is wrong with this thing? Did I install the stat? <laughs> Probably. No, nope. Nope. I did not install the snap. This is just weird. Install from file. Downloads. I wanted to show off. There's no KVM. 
anyways, I guess I won't show that up. The new installer is just freaking awesome. It looks really good. Um, it's easy. Some people had problems with the installer. I did not have problems with the installer. It just totally worked, you know, like it's supposed to. And there was absolutely no problem. <laughs> it, it went super fast. Some people says it takes a long time for it to start and work. Um, but here's a little tip for you from Uncle Bonehead. When you're installing an, a distro, doesn't matter if it's Ubuntu, Debian, uh, Arch, if you have external hard drives, especially if they are large external hard drives, unplug them until the, until you get it to boot up, and then or, you know get it installed on the hard drive that you want it installed on, then plug it in after the reboot and you're ready to roll uh, don't try to run a live cd with a extremely hard large um hard drive because it will screw it up um another tip i think i've got it on my external hard drive if you go there it is this is just an empty file to just create a file tracker dot tracker ignore and gnome when you're booting it will not scan that hard drive it will just boot so much faster you can do that on any drive you want usb drives external drives your internal drive whatever just stick a tracker ignore file on there and gnome will boot super fast um the settings are just you know they're this is gnome 46 so this is like freaking awesome i really like the dark style on the the this is just the default appearance default and dark the color is the orange looks fine to me i can handle it um the, my second choice would be the blue which kind of makes really good looking on the what is that Idawada i Idawada icons just looks good but i like the, the orange the best um you can of course add your own pictures uh these couple of these are not the default pictures i got them from ubuntu studio because i installed the ubuntu studio um thingy like that i like this one too looks really good um it's got like this one here changes you know as they goes through all of them and then this this one and the other one it changes from light to dark when you change the theme. I personally, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a sucker for actual real life pictures more than actually anything else. Um, you see, it's got, it comes with the six dot something or other kernel. I am currently using the, uh, six dot. Where is it at? There is Linux 6.8.031 low latency kernel. Um, this is, I think this is the newest long term kernel. I got the low latency one because I wanted that for my audio creation and stuff. And it looks like my screen froze over there. My screen capture freeze. Yes, it did. Okay, now we're back. The this this is Wayland, by the way. I did not show that. Probably should show that. 
the thing about this is what I found interesting, and I did not look to see, maybe there's Waylon, but I did not look to see is when you're in the live USB, you're using X11. If I remember right, 2204 did the same thing. But when you boot into the install, you're in Wayland. Which is fine and dandy. You can log out or log into Exor still if you don't like Wayland. Um, I'm actually giving Wayland a shot. And so far, so good, except for my right monitor has has this thing about it will temporarily shut off and then come back on it's a hardware thing it's not nothing to do because it does it on every distro out there and it doesn't matter if it's wayland or x11 and when it does that i freeze on on obs studio um usually i do this live i haven't this is like the first time in a long time that I've used OBS Studio. Um, I, I've, I got used to using Rumble Studio online and just doing everything live and no editing. And it's just one of those things for some reason. Rumble doesn't want to see my camera no more. And it doesn't want to let me do any screen sharing or anything like that and it's not just on ubuntu 2404 it was doing this on mx linux 2 in brave um i did not have chrome or firefox to try on mx linux because i just wasn't really that all that into it all the shit was going on with john and him being in the hospital and stuff and i just didn't feel like messing with it but I'm curious as to why it works, the camera and microphone work great on like Jitsi or Zoom, but it does not work on Rumble and it's getting annoying. Um, but anyways, I digress. The App Store, we get back to the App Store. Um, well, some of the other stuff that they, they updated... Uh, it will, this is tentatively, as of right now, current users of Ubuntu 2310 are going to be offered to up, automatically upgrade to 2404, it's not too long after the release. Users of 2204 LTS will be offered the automatic upgrade when 2404.1 lands, which is tentatively scheduled for August 15th later this year so this app store is the best app store ubuntu has ever had i'm hearing people griping about this like it's the worst and it's not this is the best experience for a i mean they were the App Store used to be so bad in Ubuntu that they just quit using it and went to GNOME software. <laughs> <coughs> and, and but this this App Store is impressive. The thing that sucks about it is it pushes snaps so much. It wants everything to be a snap, which is fine. I get that. Not a big deal. Oh, look. There's the Debian packages. But anyways, you can go through it and get everything you want. You can look for updates, do your updates. You got your games, development, productivity, featured, explore. The, but the snaps, you, if you want to find a deb, you have to search for the app and filter devs out from the snaps. I get where that can be a nagging problem. But look at it from Canonical's point of view. 
and for support. Support. They want to support Snaps because it will cover all of the flavors. Ubuntu Mate, Lubuntu, Kubuntu, Zubuntu, Ubuntu Studio, yada, 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 Unity, um, what's the other one, Cinnamon, Budgie. It, they want to be able to cover all of those in one support thing. It's it's an effort that none of the other distros are trying because they only got like one one desktop and then they they act like it's easy. It's not. You got to remember the size of Ubuntu, the amount of users Ubuntu has. It is the largest and most popular Linux distribution in the world. There's no getting around that. And there's no no arguing that. It, it's Ubuntu is the reason why Linux has gotten as big as it has. I understand why there's hate thrown their way because the Snap store back end is proprietary. They made some funny, stupid mistakes with looking for, you know, trying to get money out of, you know, using Amazon in the search results. But geez, people, think about it. Look at it from, from the end user's point of view and the canonical employee's point of view. They have to support literally millions and millions of people for free, most of them. <laughs> and you're you're pissed because you might have, you don't like snaps and you're gonna have to physically go in there and remove them yourself. Quit being such an arrogant Luddite. They don't make it for you. Ubuntu is not made for the power user. Ubuntu is made for the normal, average, everyday computer user. Not a Linux user, a computer user. Um, they, they, they need to make money to stay alive and to just keep doing that. At the end of the day, here's the bottom line. It's still possible to remove the snaps. And replace them with devs, flatbacks, whatever you want. Canonical has stated that they want to make a immutable version, and everything where everything is a snap. I get that. I don't know why companies are doing that. I don't know why people want to make these immutable distros. They're the dumbest thing on the face of the planet. But I get that they want to. Make it so that users can't screw it up. But at the same cost, you're screwing yourself. But anyway, I digress. Um, that's a totally different argument for the for a totally different day. Um, snaps are just the way that Canonical has invested in differentiating Ubuntu from the rest of the Linux crowd. They want to make it easy for themselves to provide support for everybody. It's not that hard to figure out. They're not trying to suck up all your your data and sell it. They don't do that. It's obvious. So like I said, I've been running this beta version for almost two weeks now. I love it. I never thought I would say that. I thought I was going to stay on BSPWM for the rest of my entire life. I still love BSPM, BSPWM. I still love tiling window managers. And I've always liked, I, you know, I've liked GNOME. I don't like what they do as far as not coding stuff. I love the product that they produce. 
but I don't like how they fight to keep changing stuff just to change shit. It's dumb. And I don't, you know, it's it's stupid to remove functionality to make the code simple and then have to put the functionality back in with extensions from people outside of who created the original code and then just totally change the way you do the code breaking all the extensions it's, it's that that concept does not work in my mind if you're going to create a functional environment for users to use put the shit in the base code don't just rip it out um don't try to make it easy on yourself and then say it's somebody else's fault that it wasn't made easy on you. Either make the product or don't make the product. That's what, that's basically why System76 has created Cosmic Desktop. And I can't wait for that because that looks like it's going to be really, really cool because it does not look like a desktop environment. It looks like they are creating a tiling window manager. That's also a desktop environment. <laughs> so kind of like Hyperland, which I don't understand Hyperland. Hyperland is not all that classy. It's a window manager. Com oh, I'm sorry, compositor. So what? It's got animations. Gnome's got animations. KDE's got animations. It's... Stop trying to be the fancy Hollywood looking cool shit. Just make stuff that works, people. But anyways, like I said, Ubuntu is made for the people that use computers. It's not made for the Linux Luddites. It's not made for the YouTubers, the, the reviewers. It's not made for the for, for the podcasters or the, or the Linux journalists. It's made for people that are using their computers every day to either get work done or to do play or to just get online. And keeping it simple is the best, best approach. Remember that. With Linux, it's not what you use. It's that you're using. And we'll catch you guys again next time. Always be good. Always be safe. And never ever stick your finger where you wouldn't stick your face. <laughs>